refers to it as dance, <laughs> and once again, let me just read you what he, um, he has described. He says, a folk dance was composed on the 19th of March, 2001. It is written for a percussion ensemble of four players. The idea behind the music was to create African rhythmic patterns by one tenor of instruments reminiscent of traditional dances. Uh, each individual player is, is assigned specific patterns to be realized on two or three instruments. The entire piece is based on three basic rhythmic cells, and I'll demonstrate those in just a second. All other rhythmic patterns are derivations, elongations, or permutations on these three cells. So the three cells that he's referring to is that one is just eighth notes, where the steady eighth notes. Another one is triplets, and then is, oh, another one is more syncopated rhythms. Okay, and, and really, what he, what he does here is that he he takes um, takes these various cells and he puts them together in different ways and passes them around the ensemble from player to player, and you get a lot of two plus three going on, two two duple uh, two plus three. Uh, duple, duple versus triple, okay? And so you get a little bit of a rub, you know, when you hear that two against three, but very common in a lot, a lot of the African folk. Let me also say this, and that he calls this a folk dance. Generally speaking, in, in most of the African cultures, but not necessarily all, a lot of percussion instruments are used to mainly accompany, okay? Uh, one of my passions for years, those of you who know me, have been Cuban music. And I, I refer to it usually as Afro Cuban music. And being that Godwin is from Nigeria, one of the things that struck me is that one of the most influential tribes uh, from Nigeria is what was referred to as the Yoruba tribe. And the Yoruba tribe, uh, you, can go to, you can go to Cuba, you can go to Haiti, you can go to Brazil. And you can see the influences of, of this Yorba, Yorba Trump. And again, most of their drumming will accompany dance and song. But what he's done here is sort of taken the rhythmical ideas that you might hear in some of these cultures. He's, he's transplanted it to a more, a little bit more modern instrumentation of this. We don't always have the uh, availability of African instruments. Uh, and and he's, he's written a piece. So we're, we're going to play this. Uh, we're we're going to repeat the form of it twice. But it just struck me tonight, it's one of those pieces that if you wanted to, oh, you could just keep repeating it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, why is that? Because when in most African cultures, and I know for a fact in, in Afro-Cuban cultures, dances just go on and on and on. It's not like, okay, there's a four minute arrangement and it starts and it stops and the dance is over. No, you might dance for a half an hour, okay? But we won't play it that long, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 